Hey everyone, my name is Dylan and this is Grant Lavelle from Maximum Life Expectancy. I'm from Gunspot.com and we're coming to you for Tolster.com and today we're going to be talking about some concealed carry life hacks. Now for a little bit of background, I'm just a gun enthusiast who's been uh, using concealed carry for about the last five years, maybe five and a half. Uh, Grant on the other hand is a, a Marine, a SWAT officer, and a firearm instructor who's been concealing for 25 years who's been doing concealed carry for 25 years, and he's going to share some of his tips and tricks with us today. And I will be sharing some of the stuff I've learned in my brief time as, uh, you know, being concealed carry. So, Grant, what would you say is the first uh, tip or trick that someone should uh, consider when concealed carrying? Well, concealed carry really is a lifestyle. Um, I've found that too many people rush out to invest in the stuff component, and the most important investment you can make is yourself so you you have to be willing to get trained you have to look at training not as a singular incident um, or a single class or a single you know time to the range but as something that is, is something that you've got to carry on as part of the lifestyle so you need to invest in yourself yeah, and I think something we've seen uh, now is, is we have some constitutional carry states, uh, which are which are a great thing. I'm not dogging it at all, but but I think what we'll, we are seeing more of is people um, can conceal carry now without taking any instruction or class at all, um, which is, is probably not a great idea because, like Grant said, you need to invest in yourself, make sure you know your gun, um, and make sure you're comfortable using that so that it's safe for you and safe for everyone else around you. So one of the things that I learned really quickly when I first started to conceal carry was that uh, you know you have to have a good belt because I, I think the the very first gun that I ever concealed carry uh, was a Glock 23, um, which I was like a really skinny kid at 21, you know, so I was like I don't know 190 pounds, and I had a department store belt which was really thin. And the thing that I found with the Glock 23 is that for me, especially at that time, it was a heavy gun when it was loaded with all those 40 caliber rounds, and then I had this really really weak belt that I was wearing and it made life almost unbearable and I didn't get how anybody could conceal carry because uh, I had this flimsy belt and over time even the belt itself started to sag so since then uh, a belt that I've had the most experience with was uh, a Bigfoot gun belt which is kind of my nicer of the two belts it's a leather belt still looks nice if you have to tuck it in there all are holsters out there that are tuckable you can still tuck your shirt in uh, we have the oath holsters from Tolster right here on the table and they are tuckable so you can tuck those in. So that was my nice kind of dress looking belt. And then um, I've used um, an, an assorted amount of nylon belts uh, that are like a, a duty belt or a trainer belt or something like that. And those are really good. The thing that's nice about the nylon ones with the Velcro is you can cinch those down and get a really comfortable fit to keep that gun uh, close and tight to you. Yeah, absolutely. The belt is a big uh, component. You know, if you, if you have that chintzy in a walmart you know department store belt it, it was never designed to handle that extra weight which is kind of uh, actually right there we talked about our third point so the third point that that grant specifically wanted to talk about today um, was not to buy cheap so you know when you're buying a belt when you're buying ammo for your uh, concealed gun um, you know don't buy those cheap full metal jacket rounds get a defense round get a good belt and get a good holster. Um, you know, there's always going to be something to compete for your monetary budget. Um, but when you make this choice, I, I need to carry because of X, because of what's going on in the world today, because of existing threats that may exist to our family. Well, that, that means I'm going to have to make a conscious decision to to carve out money from the entertainment budget or some other area in order to invest in myself. And so one of the things I've learned here fairly recently uh, with, with conceal carry is if you if you're conceal carrying right now, you know, you, you're working towards it or it's something you do every day. Um, a lot of us spend a lot of time in the car, either uh, traveling to, to go places where we have to grocery shop or shop for other things. Or some of you have long commutes and, and you want to be able to carry your gun with you, which you should. Um, but one of the things that, that's uncomfortable is riding in a car. And a solution that I've, I've found to that that's kind of a life hack for you right here is 
is actually sometimes I will take my t-shirt uh, or whatever shirt I'm wearing and I will tuck that between the gun and myself while I'm sitting down. Now I appendix carry um, so if, if you're carrying uh, back at three o'clock or on your back or something that might be a little difficult to do but with appendix carry uh, it's really easy to tuck that shirt behind it uh, and then another thing that you can actually do on top of that is uh, if you take the seat belt portion that goes around your waist and you put that behind you and your gun that can actually protect you in the event of a crash uh, because in a crash that seat belt is going to tighten up and if it's in front of the gun it's going to push that gun into you uh, whereas if it's behind it uh, it won't be doing that when, when if you get in a crash and we've already kind of been talking about it but but our last point to finish up this video we said we were going to throw five things out there to make you better at concealed carry and the last one uh, that Grant's kind of already touched on there is uh, commitment so in, in your everyday life in your everyday carry you've got to have commitment to everyday carrying so I've seen folks that you know, adopt this sometimes concealed carry lifestyle as if we are in control of when the threat's going to exist. You know, oh, we're, I'm going into the city. Um, I better carry today. Um, but I don't need to in my own little, you know, suburb town. Well, you know, we don't get to choose. And, you know, it doesn't matter how good your equipment is that's back in the sock drawer. If it's not on you, you can't do anything about it. And so, you know, we have to be committed and, and it is uh, a sacrifice. You know, the, the chances are pretty slim for sure that we're gonna actually need to draw our gun. But that doesn't allow us or, or nor should we allow it to settle in our mind that, yeah, it's not that big a deal. No, it, it is a big deal. Um, every day in America, there's somebody with a concealed carry um, permit or, or weapon that, that intervenes. They may not shoot and kill somebody. They may not, you know, have to pull the trigger, but they intervene and stop life and death from happening and taking place. Okay, and that's it for this video about life hacks, tips, and tricks for your everyday concealed carry. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.